Previously known as the Bossier Doe, Carol Cole spent most of her death being an unidentified Jane Doe, oddly Carol had been ruled out as being the identity of the Jane Doe, but it is unknown why. Carol was just 17 years old when her body was found in 1981, in the Boza Parish, Louisiana. She had been concealed in a heavily wooded area that she was found wearing jeans, a white long-sleeved top with pink yellow and blue stripes, a beige hooded sweater, white socks, with blue and yellow streaks, white boxer briefs, and bra and size 7 shoes. One of the most identifying accessories she wore, was a leather belt with the buckle reading, Buffalo Nickel. Carol's cause of death was established as stabbing, and her body had been punctured nine times. The murder weapon was found in the soil, near her remains. She was killed around four to seven weeks before her body was discovered, and she was in an unrecognizable state of decomposition, although authorities did manage to create a description, of what the victim may have looked like. Carol known as the Bossier Doe at the time, was described as being white, with possible Native American ancestry, 5 foot 5 to 5 foot 6 and 125 to 160 pounds, with blonde straight shoulder length hair. It was also discovered that her braces had been removed, but not professionally. Although Carol's sister, Linda Jeannie, Feltz did not give up looking for her, it was a 911 operator who made the connection between Carol Cole and the Bozo Doe. On February 6, 2015, the 911 operator who'd seen Bozo Doe's image, as well as Carol's, on a Facebook page reported the likeness to the police, the match was solidified via DNA, and Carol was reburied in Maple Grove Cemetery in Comstock, Michigan on June 18, 2015. Carol Cole was native to Michigan, and had been missing from San Antonio, Texas, since 1980. She and her sister Jeannie had lived with their grandmother in Michigan, after their parents had divorced, but in 1979, Carol decided to accompany her mother to Texas, and kept in contact with her sister, via telephone, and handwritten letters. It seemed that Carol had a history of running away, as when her mother placed her in a girl's home, run by the Palmer Drug Abuse Program in May of 1980, she had left of her own volition, by October, that same year. The phone calls and letters that her family had been receiving, stopped in December, of 1980. Her grandmother traced a place she had stayed at, to Shreveport, Louisiana. Carol had reportedly resided here, for a short time after leaving the PDAP. The residents of the home told Carol's grandmother, that she'd left to attend a party, and never returned. It's possible that after this time, Carol had spent a period of her life, at a religious institution named, the New Bethany School for Girls, in Arcadia, Louisiana. An image taken around the time of her disappearance, showed a group of girls from the school, sitting on pews, and Jeannie thought that one of them resembled, Carol. Investigators followed this lead, but it resulted in no new information, other than that a woman claimed to have spent time with a girl like Carol, but had forgotten her name. Some believe the shoes and style of clothing that she was found in, reflected the dress code set in place, by the new Bethany School for Girls. It's also noted that Carol had broken the braces from her teeth before she disappeared, this lined up well with the Bozo Doe's orthodontics. Jean had also reported her sister missing, suspecting foul play once the communication between them, abruptly halted. She and a childhood friend of Carol's, had relentlessly searched for the missing girl for years, even listing her on Facebook and Craigslist, to garner some awareness for the case, and as we know it was this that led the 911 dispatcher to come across the striking resemblance between the Bossier Doe and Carol. The 17-year-old's grandmother, searched for her granddaughter tirelessly too, but passed away, before this connection was made. A man, named Henry, Lee Lucas, a serial killer, confessed to the murder of Carol Cole, and that of other unidentified victims, however his confession is not deemed as credible by authorities. He was in Florida at the time of Carol's demise. The strongest suspects in the case of Carol Cole, is a man named, John Chesson, whose children discovered the body, in 1981. His daughter Frances O'Quan, was the one to point the finger. According to Francis, Chesson had taken the children hunting for the first time that day, to establish his innocence by finding the victim's body, and reporting it. Reportedly, Chesson had instructed the children to walk in a certain direction, watching them like he was waiting for something. 
Frances described her father as abusive, and claimed that a young hitchhiker he had brought home, was Carol. Chesson had been convicted for the murder of his estranged wife's former mother-in-law, in 1997, and died in prison, in 2016. Francis's brother committed suicide in 2008, investigators working on the case of Carol Cole interviewed the widow of Francis's brother, as well as Chesson, who remained a person of interest up until his death. The lead investigator on the case asked Francis to show her where her father picked up the girl, who was possibly Carol Cole, and was taken to one of the locations, where Carol had last made a call to Michigan from. Francis did not know this, prior to showing the investigator the location. The only other theory in the case was brought up by Jeannie, who claimed that Carol had mentioned a boyfriend who mistreated her, in one of her letters, however, this lead does not seem to have been followed up, or perhaps, led nowhere. The new Bethany School for Girls was closed down in 2001, after being the site of multiple sexual abuse allegations. The founder died in February 2015, aged 82. The identity of the murderer of Carol Cole, remains unknown, and her sister, still, seeks, justice.